Hi. Nice to see all of you again. It is nice to be seen. We are usually just a nebulous mist. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was good I came this morning because I realized all this morning I was negatively creating about my upcoming uh, ad for my hypnosis business. When money gets a little tight, I have the hardest time with that. In other words, I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid of pain or injury. But when a bank account gets tight, it gives me more trouble than anything else. I just wonder if you had some words for me to, to help deal with that. Well, first we want to say to you that it feels like that because that's about as uncomfortable as you get. In other words... It's as uncomfortable as I get. We would say that there could be someone saying something like, oh yeah, I used to worry about money, but now I'm dying of this dreaded disease. This is the thing that's really bothering me. And, <laughs> and that's why I keep going, hey, oh, see, that guy's got cancer and I'm worried about next month's rent, you know? Well, negative emotion is negative emotion. Esther saw something very unsettling on television one day, which took her to her knees. It shook her up so much. And she said, Abraham, if this feels this bad to me and I'm this far removed from it, what must it feel like to those people who are living it? And we said, it's not feeling as bad to them as it is to you. Again, we were talking about this vibrational relativity thing. So anytime you want something and you are in the moment offering a vibration that is contradicting it, you're going to have discord. There isn't a subject that is more thought about in your environment than the subject of money because money, it does not need to be, but it usually is very closely tied to your sensation of well-being, to your sensation of being able to create many other things. And so it's just a vibration that most of you, even while you were in your mother's womb, were picking up on vibrations of lack from the environment around you. There is a pervasive philosophy in your society and it doesn't matter which part of the world your society is, there is a pervasive belief in the society of humandom that says that the pile of resources is a finite pile. And if somebody's getting more than their fair share, then somebody else is going to be deprived of it. We want you to know that in your vibrational future, is more abundance than you have time to spend in this and a hundred lifetimes. And it is all there, activated and ready for you. You've been launching rockets of desire. We have never seen more activation waiting in vibrational escrow around the subject of abundance before than what we are feeling that you have put there for yourself. So all you have to do is find some way of getting closer to trusting that it's there, which is further from doubting. In other words, it's all about that emotional journey. It is. And it is. as you make that journey, you only have to trust a little more for some of it to come in. You don't have to have absolute faith and belief for things to improve. You just got to start tipping that way. Okay. We also okay. want to say to you that, and we have not said this here today, but it is really important to know, all of this launching of thought that we've been talking about, because what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling and what is manifesting is always a vibrational match. So your vibrational future has probabilities of things that you're going to love when they unfold and things that you would not love when they unfold. In other words, as you've been beating the drum of different things, you've launched different things into your vibrational future. As you feel negative emotion as you're walking along, merrily along your way, that means you're walking toward the manifestations of things you do not want. Okay. When you feel positive emotion as you are walking along, that means you're walking toward things that you are going to like when they unfold. 99% of every creation is complete. So when something not wanted happened and you say, where did that come from? That just came out of the blue. We say, hardly. <laughs> You've been practicing the vibration of that. So oh, when yeah. you complain about money, what are you walking toward? When you are thrilled about money, what are you walking toward? When you feel appreciation of what's there, what are you walking toward? When you feel hopeful, what are you walking toward? When you feel doubtful, what are you walking toward? When yeah. you feel free, what are you walking toward? When you feel uncomfortable that somebody is charging too much for something, what are you walking toward? When you feel appreciative that you can get it at any price, what are you walking toward? 
Ford. When you appreciate the $4 strawberry, what are you walking toward? When you condemn the $4 strawberry, what are you walking toward? In other words, so many things are tied to your vibrational proclivity relative to this. And there is an abundance lined up outside your door that's just going to knock you over. Except by the time you get there, it won't knock you over because it will feel like the next logical step. Don't be hard on yourself because you are not deliberately holding yourself apart from the vibration that lets in what you want any more than any of your clients are deliberately holding themselves in a vibrational pattern that doesn't let them in. Okay. You're coaching people into self hypnosis. So let's hear a little of it here for yourself. <laughs> in other words, if you were coaching someone else and you wanted them to feel more abundant, wouldn't you offer words that would soothe them? And so from where you stand, what is the most soothing statement for you that you can conjure from right here where you stand? I have so many wonderful ideas and projects and they're all on the cusp of happening. All right, now that all feels sort of out there. And so that didn't feel all that soothing to us. Okay. <laughs> so try again. I've worked on everything else in my life. Four years ago, nothing in my life was working. Now everything else is working. Good. I've That's all right. That, that's all right. Because that is movement. In other words, what you're bolstering is the idea that when I focus, I can make things happen. Everything else. I mean, I was the past four years. I've been focusing on myself and my family. And it's in a more perfect place than I ever thought it could be. And this vibration around money was just a more stubborn vibration than I realized. And I'd grown so accustomed to the way money feels that I was missing guidance that was letting me know that I was continuing a thought that wasn't letting me go to where I want to go. And now I realize that my thought around money and the way money feels has been in a deeper, darker vibration than I have been willing to own up to because I am a teacher and as a teacher, I want to be able to express success. And so I I haven't even wanted to admit the powerlessness that I've been feeling around money. And yet, until I acknowledge the powerlessness that I've been feeling around it, then I can't move into another place. And so I'm going to see if I can't get some movement around this. It would have been nice if earlier in my life I'd had some evidence of some success. It would have been nice if the family that I'd been born into had already figured it out so that they could have taught me. It would have been nice if I'd known earlier on about vibration. In other words, we're reaching for a little bit of blame because blame certainly feels better than powerlessness. It blame certainly feels better than guilt on it. And it would have been nice, but there are a lot of people, I guess, I believe, that f were like me who were raised in environments or who did not have much evidence of abundance around them that through osmosis sort of picked up on this vibration and about it. The more I think that maybe this might be a good thing for me to be living because I have this one last thing that I'm going to vibe into place and I'm talking to people all day every day who have vibrations stuck in their craw that they don't know how they got stuck there. There's certainly nothing wrong with having a sticking point because all a sticking point is, is a habit of thought that contradicts something that I want. And for heaven's sakes, when you look around this world, how many people do you hear say you can have everything you want financially in comparison with the people that hear you say, do you think money grows on trees? Do you think that you can have everything that you want? Do you think that the universe revolves around you? In other words, most people who surround me, we're speaking for you, stand in place where they believe utterly in the shortage of money. So much so that they've developed patterns of rage around people who have money. Jerry and Esther, as they drive around in this magnificently and extraordinarily expensive monster bus, they are delighted to see how many people pass them giving thumbs up, how many people are giving them the high five sign, how many people are expressing their appreciation for this magnificent thing that they have. And Jerry says, I think it is because across the back of it we have written, life is supposed to be fun. In other words, it lets people know that the idea of feeling good and the idea of having fun and the idea of prosperity all sync up one with another. In other words, you've got to make peace with the idea of prosperity. And we'd think that you're like so many people. We don't think you have. 
We think that you are born into a culture, and most people are, where you've decided that those people who are really abundant are on the wrong side of the chart. You know how many people come to gatherings like this? And for years, they wanted to debate the issue of spirituality versus materialism. So let us ask you, when you are splitting up a pie somewhere, do you get yours and never mind what anybody else has? Or are you always considerate of others first? I guess I'm always considerate of others. <laughs> and we think that's nice when there really are only so many pieces of pie to go around. But when it's an infinite pie, you can have a different stance. Talk to us about it some more and let's see what turns okay. up. Um, I believe that you create whatever you create. And I believe that I'm in the process of creating all these things. I'm creating a key card in China. I'm creating the hypnosis business. I'm creating a, a software project. I'm creating all these things. My family life is exactly where I want it. Um, I think that's probably taken my concentration at this point. I, I live in a well-to-do neighborhood. I don't feel that I begrudge anybody else what they have. So if you can now turn it toward the subject at hand. Okay. I'm In lost. other words, you have very carefully avoided the topic that we're talking about here. <laughs> okay. So talk about that. I... Where are the words? You haven't practiced them. Okay. You see, the words that you've practiced, you don't want to speak here. The, the words that I practiced? The words that you feel around the subject of dollars, you don't think are appropriate in the attitude of creating dollars. When we ask you for the words that are appropriate, you can't find them because you haven't practiced them. Talk to us about what's happening right now. Let us use the words that we've been using because they really are easier to hear. Make peace for yourself with where you are about money. Make peace about where I'm at. I've got three months worth of money. Good um, for you. I have three months' worth of money. A lot of people live from paycheck to paycheck, and I have been there before. I have three months of buffer. That's pretty darn good. I have three months of buffer and all kinds of things. But three months of buffer. And what else? So I've got three months' worth of money. Got an ad going out next week. My wife, who's always had a hard time with this, is in a totally different place. She has faith in me. I've handled everything else in my life. Whatever happens, I'll handle. The house is taken care of. Kids are in a good place. I've been making more of this money issue than it really deserves. I've been calling it a separate issue when really when I combine it with my life in general, I see that well-being always finds me. Well-being has always come to me in a lot of varieties of ways, and it has always flowed in to the degree of money that I would allow at any point in time. I may have been using money as my measurement of success and always reaching for more. And I am beginning to realize that there is this feeling that happens within me that now I am clear that I am always going to be incomplete, that from wherever I stand, I will always desire something more. And I might have been chasing an illusion in thinking that at some point I could finally get it all done. And now I'm realizing I will never, nor would I ever want to get to the place where I get it all done because the new idea is what is calling the new life through me. I will always be asking for more of everything. I will always be asking for more money, for more clarity, for more abundance on all issues. I will always be asking for more fun, more entertainment, more opportunity to be of value. I will always be asking for more opportunity to appreciate and to be appreciated. I will be always be asking for more of all of these things. And I will always be asking for more oxygen in and out, in and out, in and out. I will always be asking for more abundance in and out, in and out, in and out. And I really do not need a bunch of money piled up beyond three months. That is certainly a wonderful buffer. Three months is way more oxygen than I've got piled up outside my door. I'm really trusting that anything I need, if I run or if I ask more, if my body asks for more, I trust that the oxygen resources will be there.